Beef short ribs are something you usually get at a restaurant, not a dish that most people would make at home. That's because braising a bone-in piece of beef can be a time-consuming pain in the ass. Most of the steps I'm going to show you can be done in advance, and there's really only 45 minutes, maybe an hour of active cooking time. And trust me, it is worth it. First, you'll want to go to my website, ingrediology.org. You can find an entire recipe guide there. It's linked down below. Just like with pork ribs, beef ribs have a membrane on the bone side. If this isn't removed, the membrane will cause the short rib to curl as it cooks. Take a fillet knife and cut a corner of the membrane free. This thing is pretty slippery, so I use a paper towel to get a good grip on it. Pull away from the back of the short rib and repeat with every rib. Once cleaned, go ahead and salt on all sides. You can do this up to a day in advance of cooking. This gives the salt more time to penetrate this thick cut of meat. Now it's time to get a large, heavy bottom skillet on the stove, bring it up to temp on high heat, and add two tablespoons of oil. When you see the first thin wisps of smoke coming from the pan, add the short ribs bone side up. Sear the ribs on all sides. You want to pay attention to your heat during this process. We want a solid sear without burning the bottom of the pan. If you do end up with black spots in some areas, just switch the pans or clean that one out before adding your vegetables. Pull your now beautifully seared ribs out of the pan and onto a plate. Hopefully you haven't burned the shit out of your pan, so you're now free to add your mirepoix. Hold off on the garlic though. Add that once the other veggies begin to soften. Give them like a minute head start. Once the garlic is softened and fragrant, toss in the tomato paste. Mix this thoroughly so that the veggies are coated. You'll need to stir continuously while cooking the tomato paste so it caramelizes evenly. The natural sugars in it will darken and create an even deeper fond on the bottom. Again, make sure you don't let the heat get away from you and burn the bottom of the pan. This is a game of brinkmanship. How caramelized can I get it without actually burning it? When the tomato paste is significantly redder in shade, add in all the wine at once. For the wine, I suggest using a red that pairs well with beef. Something tannic and full-bodied, like a burgundy, a merlot, or a zinfandel. By adding liquid to the pan, the fond will easily come off the bottom when scraped with your spoon or spatula, incorporating the seared beef and caramelized tomato flavors into our sauce. The wine is already probably bubbling away merrily in the pan. When the level is half as high as when we first added the wine, you're good to add the beef stock. Before we can toss this in the oven and set it and forget it, we need to make a roux. A roux is a thickening agent made out of butter and flour. These are measured in a one-to-one -one ratio by weight. This is the same idea as the old joke, what weighs more, a pound of bricks or a pound of feathers? They weigh the same, but they just have different volumes. There's three stages of cooking a roux. White, then blonde, and finally brown. What changes during these different stages, you ask? Well, think of it this way. The longer you cook a roux, the more flavor you develop, but the less thickening power it has. A white roux has the least flavor, but packs the most punch in the thickening department. Although a brown roux has a developed nutty flavor, you'll need to use more to thicken the same amount of liquid when compared to a white or blonde roux. We're going to straddle the line between thickening power and flavor today and make a nice blonde roux. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Now go ahead and add the roux to the sauce and stir to combine. Bring the sauce to a simmer and turn the heat to the lowest possible setting. Throw in the bay leaf, thyme, and rosemary, then go ahead and add the short ribs back into the pan as well. Cover the pan tightly with aluminum foil and let this simmer on low for 90 minutes. Alternatively, you can preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit as long as the pan is oven safe and you just pop it in there. If the pan isn't oven safe, but you still want to cook these in the oven, just transfer everything to a roasting pan and then cover tightly. If you're perfectly cooked and tender, go ahead and remove the ribs from the pan. You're done when that short rib seems to melt with nothing but a fork. Strain the sauce through a fine mesh strainer, removing all the veggies and herbs. Plate the ribs and top with your now perfectly strained red wine sauce. Let me tell you, it doesn't get much better than this. Thank you to our supporters on Kofi who helped make this show possible. You guys are awesome. Why don't you go check out one of our other videos? They've all got recipe guides with them to help you complete this at home.